Are you a female trying to break into the male-dominated industry within government contracting? Well, no worries. In this video, I'm going to share my journey as a government contractor, how I went from a meager $23,000 in a year to multiple million dollar contracts in record time. I'm talking about in an 18 month period. I'm Felicia over at FeliciaStreeter.com where I help small businesses just like you get into government contracting. Here's what I do. I help you guys go from not knowing where to start, the information overload and those bidding nightmares to a step-by-step -step framework that will teach you how to navigate the government RFP process, get to the bid table and start securing government contracts. So if you're ready to say goodbye to those bidding nightmares, not knowing where to start, I am here to help. Make sure you join this community as I teach you guys how to navigate the government RFP process. My goal is to teach you guys how to get those multiple year contracts, those million dollar contracts in record time. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the trainings that we drop right here on this channel, and then go ahead and like this video. All right, so let's get into this video here where we're going to talk about the struggles of making the transition from struggling as a government contractor to being successful. Now, this is my journey. This is what I face. I'm going to share that with you, but also I'm going to give you some steps on how you can overcome some of the things that I face, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are facing as well. All right. So this is one of those transparency videos. I'm going to lay it out for you. So the first thing is overcoming adversity. There are no handouts. There are no handouts. You're going to have to be able to do the work. You're going to have to be able to hold your own weight when you're performing and working on a project. So here's the thing. I don't teach the middleman strategy. So what I'm talking about here is those of you that come join me in my community, your goal is to make the transition from the private sector and make the move into government contracting. So you guys are already doing work in the private sector uh, or working with other small businesses, you're generating money in your business, you know how to provide the service that you're going to provide, and now you just want to make the move into government contracting and also offer it to the government. So those are the people that I'm talking about here in this video, and I'm talking about the adversity of having to be able to self-perform. So you're providing a service, okay? So you're going to have to be able to self-perform some of the work. All right, that will definitely give you a leg up. And here's the other thing. You don't want to look at it like, okay, you got your SAM registration, you have your certifications, and now the opportunities will come. Well, I just told you the adversity that you're going to face. The other thing is this. If you think about government contracting and the uh, small business program that they have in place for small businesses where you get your certifications, whether you're minority owned, service disabled vet, woman owned, right? They have these programs in place because you are facing adversity as a small business. So therefore they have that program. But also within that program, you get your certifications, that is not enough, okay? One, you're gonna have to be proactive in your approach to government contracting, but two, you're gonna have to be able to self-perform some of the work. All right, so make sure you're set up to self-perform some of the work. You're going to have to look at your capacity. You're going to have to look at your uh, ideal client, make sure everything is in alignment. You're able to self-perform some of the work. And then in whatever you're doing, be proactive. The second thing I want to do is share a couple of lessons from the trenches. Here's the first thing. You heard what I just said from the trenches. So I'm talking about from my experience, my knowledge, I'm sharing it with you. So that tells you that somebody has come before you. All right. This is not new. It may be new to you, but it is not new. And those that have come before you, like myself, we have figured it out. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. 
Now, here's one of the things I want to tell you. Learning on the fly can be costly. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Because learning on the fly, a lot of times you're going to miss steps. You're going to leave things out. And in the end, it's going to cost you money. So if you're new to government contracting and you need to learn how to navigate the RFP process, you should be doing that sooner rather than later. If you have an opportunity before you, it may be too late because that bid may be due in the next couple of weeks. You possibly, you, you can't possibly learn everything that you need to know in two weeks. You can cram and try, but a lot of times when you rush in putting these proposals together, you leave things out. And again, when you do that, it costs you money in the end. And so that's why you don't want to, you know, uh, try to learn on the fly. Now, here's the thing. Oh, did I learn this? There are things you're going to need to know. But here's the, the thing. You don't know what you don't know. It's hard to go ask a question about something that you have no knowledge about. So again, that's kind of like learning on the fly as well, where if you don't know about a particular aspect of government contracting or a particular piece of the FAR that may be important to you, then you don't know to ask about it to get the answers that you need because you don't know about it. So in the end, you can't ask questions about things you don't know. Oh my gosh, did I learn that? And so it's it's kind of like, I think about when I used to work for the government, I was an employee for the government and I was training a new hire. And so in training them, here's what I found. And then being trained myself, here's what I found. We have the steps to train someone, but a lot of times we train them on how things should be done, but we never train them initially on when issues come up, when problems come up, when things don't work out as they should. And so that's the same thing with government contracting. You know, I tell people, I give you answers to the questions you don't know to ask. That's the kicker. That's one of the things that make me different than a lot of other people. Okay, so I don't sugarcoat it. I don't give you a lot of fluff but I keep it 100 with you, but I give you answers to questions you don't know to ask. That's the same thing here. You can't ask questions that you don't know anything about. And so in training, what I've done is I've taken what I know and the things I wish I had known and put them into my government contract accelerator program. So that's why I always say I give you answers to the questions you don't even know to ask. And a lot of times, you know, I have um, group calls where students, clients will come to the calls. And a lot of times they just come to sit and listen to some of the other people questions because they'll say they don't have any questions because I put everything in the training. But I'm able to do that because I've been where you guys are and I not only taught you what you need to know to get to the finish line, but I also know there's going to be different obstacles that come up. And so... I'm trying to cut the red tape, eliminate some of the obstacles for you, and just get you to the finish line faster, which in essence, you should get there faster than I did because I'm cutting the red tape for you. I'm laying it out for you step by step. The third thing, oh my gosh, discover the power of prime contracting. Now, I learned that very quick. Now, there's nothing wrong if your goal is to be a subcontractor and that's all you want to do. That's cool too. Everybody it's your business. You decide what your approach will be. You decide how you want to approach government contracting. So you don't have to be a prime contractor. But for me, there's power in it. And I want it to be in a position of what I'm getting ready to share with you guys. And so that's why I elected to be a prime contractor. You don't have to, but here's my reasonings. The first thing is it can significantly impact your company's growth and revenue in a positive way. As a prime, you're in control. It is your project. Everything flows through you. So therefore you have more control of the project schedule, uh, how payments are made, um, just who the subcontractors will be, who you're gonna work with on the project. You control the flow of the project. And the payments flow in through you too. So, you know, you're right up under the agency, under the contracting officer. So that's a great place to be. You get to make sure that the project is done to your standards. So, you know, you may have um, 
a type of quality you like to deliver or a way of doing things, you get to make sure that's in place, but you also get paid first. So I want you to comment below. Are you going at it alone, making the move to government contracting? Or do you need help? Let us know down below. All right, here's number four. Knowledge is key. I already told you, knowledge is power. And you don't know what you don't know. Some of the questions you won't be able to ask, but if you continuously learn, if you're continuously putting yourself in a space and around people that are doing government contracting, whether that's the seminars or workshops or things like that, it will help you in formulating questions that you previously didn't know to ask. And the other reason to continuously learn is things are always changing. Congress put out new laws, the FAR change, uh, contracting officers change, so that means how they do things change. Things are forever changing, and if you're in the game, you got to be in the game. You want to make sure you stay connected, have your ears open, you're listening, right? You may be out somewhere and you overhear a conversation that may be beneficial to you. So you always got to have your ear to the ground. Now, here's the thing. Don't think you know everything because you don't. Be open to learning. Now, also, don't be afraid to invest in yourself as it relates to personal development and also in your business, learning things that will help your business grow and be sustainable. Because a lot of businesses fail. I think, I don't know the statistics, I should have looked it up, but I don't, you can look it up. But I think a lot of businesses fail in the first couple of years. And then I think, again, it's somewhere between, I think the year seven and 10 or something like that. But understand, if you're not evolving, not only as things change, uh, in your business, government contracting, but in business in general, as things change in the world, you know, we get different technologies and things like that, new tools you make and use, whatever it is, you have to be evolving with those changes and be open to change. And so to do that, you have to be continuously learning so that you know what's out there and what the changes are. Another thing, know the important parts of the FAR. The FAR is something that you should definitely know. Now, you can't learn everything in the FAR and just remember it all because it's a lot. But as you start to go through it, I'm sure you'll be able to determine which parts are most important to you and your business and what you're doing as a government contractor. And then those are the things that you need to know. At the end of the day, your knowledge alone can help you shorten the timeline to getting you to the finish line and securing your first government contract. Now, remember, I always tell you guys, you're just one contract away. In that being, when you get the first one, you perform, it'll get easier. It'll get easier. The first one is always the hardest. And it's not necessarily the million-dollar contract, but it's the smaller one. After that, you know, if it's a six-figure contract to get to a million, all you're doing is adding a zero. The fifth thing is accelerating growth. Nobody wants to stay at the same spot year in and year out, right? We always want to increase our goals, increase our revenue every year. We don't want to be stagnant at one place, right? So to do that, you got to grow. So in this one, I want to share with you the steps I took. How did I accelerate my growth? So this is what I'm going to share with you guys. Um, not to say it has to be your journey, but this was mine. One of the things I started with was always learning. In the beginning, again, I only knew what I knew. So I went to the free workshops, seminars that the uh, SBA would hold, and even other government agencies. I think, you know, your PTACs, your SBDCs, all of those. So I was sucking up the free resources. What I found, they were free resources. So not to say the information was bad, but it was, it was very introductory. And now with me being where I am today and looking back, um, it's very basic and it wasn't enough to get me to the finish line. I know that from just the experience of itself. So I had to do some other things, which I'm gonna share with you. So stick here. Uh, another thing I had to learn is about the contracts coming out and who were putting out the contracts, which agencies uh, were putting out the type of contracts that I could perform on um, 
then within that, I had to look at the type of contract it was, how was it set aside, uh, what was the size of the contracts they were putting out? How long were the contracts? Like length, were they a one-off contracts? You know, would it take me a year to complete the contract? Was it a multiple year contract? So I had to look at all those things, but also I had to look at my capacity because my capacity had to be in alignment with what they were putting out. So that allowed me to then determine which agencies to target. I also had to get on the government's radar. How do you do that? It's called the SAM registration today. Back in the day, it was called something else, but today it is your SAM registration. That's one of the ways and the first ways to get on the government's radar. Plus it's required if you want to do government contracting. The next thing, get your certifications. All the certifications for which you qualify. We kind of talked about that earlier. Make sure you have your certifications. Um, it will help you as a small business in the government marketplace not only at the federal level, but also state, city, county. So make sure you get your certifications. Another thing you have to do is your marketing activities. Remember I said you have to be proactive. Well, this is a proactive activity. So you have to do your marketing strategies, whatever you decide those to be, but you need to be out there letting people know who you are, what you offer and how you can help them solve their problems. In doing that, you also want to develop new business opportunities. All right, so business development activities. You wanna make sure you're doing that as well. Now, here we are back to proactive. You wanna prepare for opportunities coming down the pipeline. How do you even know what's coming down the pipeline? One, you gotta have your ears to the ground, but also if you know who your target agency is, you can look at their forecast, see what they have coming down the pipeline, and then you can prepare accordingly. That may entail you uh, having to increase your cash flow um, it may entail you getting more workers. You may need to, you know, team with another company, whatever that looks like. If you look at the opportunity, you know, it's coming out in the future and you can look at your capacity and see whatever deficiencies you have. And then you can start to prepare for those before the actual opportunity hit the streets, which I really suggest. And then also make sure you're always building relationships because wherever you are today, I'm sure the goal is to grow your business. As you grow, you get into larger projects, you're gonna need relationships. You're gonna need other companies, whether you guys decide to team together, whether they're your subcontractor, whether you guys decide to go into a joint venture relationship, you're gonna need people. So build those relationships as well. That's another one where you wanna um, build it before you need it. And then get a mentor. In all honesty, you know, I told you guys, you know, I used the free resources that the SBA, PTAC, SCORE, uh, Small Business Development Center, all of that. I used all of those free resources, but the game changer was when I got a mentor because then I could learn how they did things, how they went from, you know, where I was at, at that time and then getting to where uh, I wanted to take my business, which they had done. So getting a mentor definitely shortened the time frame. How else did I go from 23,000 to over 7 million in 18 months? because I hear people all the time coming to me, they've been uh, looking at government contracting for years and they still have not secured their first government contract. And that's because a lot of times you're going at it alone. You only know what you know, you only have the resources that you know about. And so the time frame to get there is a lot longer. So if you wanna fast track it, get yourself a mentor. So there you have it. I just wanted to share a few of the things that will help you guys that helped me, so I figured it may help you as well, and you guys have been asking, but I shared some of the struggles I had on my journey to you know, making that transition to successfully securing government contracts. So understand and know, your journey may be different than mine. Your journey may be different than someone else you know that's in government contracting. Just be open to the fact that you don't know everything. Even to this day, I still don't know everything. So be open to learning what you don't know. Find someone that will help you shorten your time frame to getting to the bid table. That's where you wanna go. Find someone that will give you answers to the questions you don't know to ask. In all honesty, that's the key, that's the secret sauce. There's not really a secret to government contracting, but getting answers to the questions you don't know to ask, game changer. 
So I just shared pieces of what I know it'll take for you guys to get to the finish line. So if you want the five steps and learn more about those five steps, and I can give you the five steps here, why not? So it is position, perform, profit, partner, and pace. Those are the five phases you're going to go through as you make the move to government contracting. Now, if you want more details into those five steps, I have created a free training resource that you can check out. It's called Get Government Contracts. I'll put the link down below. Again, it's a free resource and I dive a little bit deeper into the five phases. And so that will definitely help you as well on your journey to becoming a government contractor. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Turn on the notification bell and then go ahead and like this video.